From today, I'll be looking after them. One day, without any consultation, my mother-in-law, sister-in-law, and father-in-law suddenly moved in with us. They treated me like nothing more than a servant. I had reached my limit. That's when everything spiraled out of control. My name is Emma Davis. I've been married to Jack for three years now. We don't have kids yet and live as a couple. There's a good reason for that. I prioritized my career. When we got married, we were both just 24. We were still inexperienced in many ways. In today's world, people say even two incomes aren't enough to raise a family. That's why I hesitated. By the time we hit 30, our salaries would be much higher than they were in our 20s. I wanted to invest my 20s in myself through work and fun rather than focusing on raising kids. So I asked Jack to wait on having kids. Jack agreed wholeheartedly. I'm the one who pushed for marriage, so it's only fair to respect your wishes. I still want to enjoy my 20s, working hard and having fun. Well, let's focus on that for now. That was our decision as a couple. So even at 27, I've never really thought about having kids. Sure, someday, but right now, I'm happy living with Jack. And honestly, I'm satisfied with our life. But that happiness came crashing down suddenly. Hey, I'm here. One day, the door flew open, and there was my sister-in-law Kate carrying a huge suitcase. Kate is Jack's older sister, making her my sister-in-law. I've always had a hard time with her. It goes back to when I first met her three years ago at our wedding. Oh, she's shorter than I expected. With Jack's potential, I thought he'd marry someone much better. How tall are you? Maybe not even five two. <laughs> you look pretty average. I bet you've never even thought about things like BMI. You're young now, but that will catch up with you in a few years. All I could do was smile awkwardly and try to endure the uncomfortable situation. I later learned Kate worked as a model. That explained her height and slim figure. But that didn't mean I deserved to be talked to like that. Jack didn't defend me either. He just smiled and seemed to agree with her. Come on, Kate. Don't be too harsh. Sure, Emma's short by your standards, but no one can beat you. You're perfect in every way. I wondered if Jack has some sort of sister complex. Was this marriage a mistake? I wasn't sure, because when we were alone, Jack was always so sweet to me. I'm sorry. Kate's just really confident. She's a model and all, so maybe she says some things that hurt you. But I love you, Emma. That's why I married you. I want to be with you forever. Jack's words were like honey. I've always been weak to his sweet talk. If he had treated me poorly or insulted me, I probably would have reconsidered the marriage. But Jack, when we were alone, was the man I loved. We have been together since high school, and I believed in our bond. That's why I married him. Over the years, I continued to see Kate, and she kept making her passive-aggressive comments. But no matter what, I love you, Emma. I'll never stop loving you, no matter what. And so, for three years, even without kids, we remained a couple. But everything changed after that day. Wow, this place is even smaller than I imagined. Can we really live here? While I was lost in my thoughts, Kate walked right in and started looking around. In her arms was a tiny baby. I'm not slow, so I quickly realized this was Kate's child. Uh, Kate, what's going on? I nervously asked. Oh, isn't it obvious? We're moving in. The shock coursed through my entire body. I had never heard anything about this. As I stood frozen, trying to process, my mother-in-law Laura appeared. I'm coming in. Oh wow, what a messy place! How do you plan to take care of the baby here? I hope you're ready, Emma. Laura's voice was sweet, but her eyes were cold. I could feel her icy judgment. I quickly stood up, trying to gather my composure. I I clean the house every weekend when I'm off work. Oh, excuses? That won't do. You need to clean every single day now that a baby is living here. I had no choice but to nod silently under the pressure. A few hours later, Jack came home from work. I didn't even greet him. I had to ask about what just happened. Jack, why are Kate and Laura here? I didn't know anything about this. Jack's eyes widened briefly. Maybe he didn't know either, but that hope was crushed immediately. Oh, sorry, I forgot to tell you. Kate couldn't stay in her place after having the baby, so we're letting her live here for a while. My mind went blank for a moment. What? He made this decision without asking me, and he knew how uncomfortable I felt around Kate and his mom. So many questions raced through my mind, leaving me utterly confused. But no matter how much I thought about it, I couldn't understand their reasoning. 
So I gave up thinking. What's the point in arguing? It's clear they won't leave. Fighting would be a waste of time. I accepted the situation, albeit reluctantly. That was a major turning point in my life. From there, everything fell apart. Oh, Jack, welcome home. What's this, Emma? You didn't even take Jack's coat or help him with his things? What a useless wife you are. Laura's words were harsh. She fussed over Jack like he was a child, taking off his coat and hanging it up. Jack always handled this himself, but today he let her do it. Thanks, Mom. It feels good to have such a supportive family when I come home after a long day. His words felt like a slap in the face. I shrank back, trying to endure the discomfort. The only one who didn't judge me was Kate's baby. He was a sweet, innocent little boy named Ben. He smiled at me, unaware of the awkwardness in the room. Ironically, the only person who offered me any comfort was a six-month-old baby. After a few days of this strange living arrangement, Laura finally started to complain. Ugh, why is this house so cramped? Of course, with four adults and a baby crammed into a small apartment, things were bound to feel tight. But instead of understanding that, Kate had an idea. Why don't we just move? And there's a new building going up by the station. It's the perfect chance to get into a brand new apartment. Let's live there. I think we should move there. It'll be more convenient for everyone, especially me. I remembered seeing the flyers for that building, but I also remembered the prices. It was expensive. Ugh, that place is pretty pricey, Kate. Oh, but you and Jack both work, right? You two can easily handle the loan if you work together. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. It was clear that she expected Jack and me to take on the loan while they lived there rent-free. But knowing Kate and Laura, it wasn't surprising. In the short time we'd lived together, they'd shown how stingy they were with money. Whenever we went shopping for baby food or supplies, Kate would casually say, We're all living together, so baby expenses should count as household expenses, right? Laura would stuff the shopping cart with snacks and expensive tea, but never even reach for her wallet. To avoid holding up the line at the register, I always ended up paying. After that, I did my best to avoid going shopping with them but every now and then, I'd get stuck paying for everything. I think they assumed I made a lot of money because I always paid, but that wasn't true at all. In fact, some of my friends who worked as nurses made much more than I did. I was just an average 27-year-old office worker, same as Jack. And yet they expected us to buy an expensive condo while they contributed nothing? Ugh, unbelievable. But in the end, it was Jack who let me down the most. By the way, I went ahead and made a reservation for the condo we talked about. We'll go sign the contract together soon. I was speechless. Kate and Laura were overjoyed, completely ignoring my shock. Things just kept getting worse. Oh, and starting tomorrow, you'll handle Ben's daycare drop-offs and pickups, okay? What, me? Yeah, you're the best fit for it. You start work at 9.30, right? And you finish by 4? You've got the time. Her argument was that as a model with an irregular schedule, she didn't have time for childcare, so it fell on me, the person with the free time. <sighs> this was ridiculous. Wait, hold on. That's your job as Ben's mother, not mine. I'm busy too, you know. I could maybe help occasionally, but every single day? Kate ignored me and left for work, leaving Ben in my arms. She made her money, didn't pay for living expenses, and now she was dumping her child on me? I started shaking with anger, wanting to scream at her retreating figure. But then I looked down at Ben. He gazed up at me with pure, innocent eyes. He wasn't fussy and didn't cry in my arms. That's probably why Kate felt so comfortable pushing him onto me. I sighed and got ready for the day. I struggled to install the spare car seat, but I managed to get him to daycare. When I arrived, it seemed Kate had already told the staff that I'd be handling pickups and drop-offs from now on. I didn't mind taking care of Ben. He was sweet and I liked kids, but that wasn't the only problem. My bigger issue was with Laura's sticky fingers. Kate made money from modeling, so she didn't steal or ask for money. But Laura, a stay-at-home wife, was different. She kept taking money from my wallet. Laura, how many times do I have to tell you? I mostly use my card, so it's not a big deal if there's no cash in my wallet, but still an inconvenience. Oh, stop fussing. What's yours is mine. I have a right to use your earnings, too. I couldn't believe this woman. I just let out a deep sigh. My boss, Mr. Wilson, must have noticed how exhausted I looked because he called me into his office. Hey, are you okay? You've been sighing a lot lately. I'm really sorry for worrying you, Mr. Wilson. It's just that things have been tough at home. Mr. Wilson was the manager of my department, and although he was single, he had been through a divorce and had kids around my age. 
Yeah, I heard something about you being stuck taking care of your sister-in-law's kid. Yes, Ben is adorable, but there are a lot of other issues that are really wearing me out. I think my face showed how worn out I was. Mr. Wilson just shook his head, speechless. One day while I was working, I got a phone call from an unfamiliar number. I saw the area code and guessed it was from Ben's daycare. Sure enough, they told me Ben had a fever and needed to be picked up. I spoke in a low voice, but Mr. Wilson overheard. Go pick him up. I doubt your sister-in-law is going to do it. I nodded, knowing he was right. If I was getting the call, it meant Kate wasn't coming. Luckily, my company was understanding of family situations. Mr. Wilson gave me permission to leave, and I rushed to pick Ben up. His face was bright red with fever, and he looked miserable. After taking him to the hospital, they said it was just a virus, nothing too serious. I was relieved to hear that. Later that evening, when I got home, Kate was waiting for me. What the hell? Where were you with Ben all day? I asked you to pick him up, not to take him on a joyride. I had texted Kate to let her know I was picking Ben up, but apparently that wasn't enough. What good would it have done to bring him back to an empty house with only my mother-in-law there? Normally, I avoided arguing, but this time I couldn't hold back. Ben was sick. And you didn't even care to pick him up yourself. I took Ben to the hospital, got a diagnosis, and then took him to the daycare center that offers care for sick children. Wait, what? You took him to daycare even though he was sick? Isn't that against the rules? My company has a special program for employees with kids, including a daycare that can take care of sick children. Normally, they wouldn't take in a child that wasn't mine, but Mr. Wilson pulled some strings for me. They monitored Ben throughout the day, and he seemed fine. By the time I picked him up, his fever had already gone down. But instead of being grateful, Kate was furious. What kind of mother leaves her sick child at daycare? If Ben had been my child, I would have gone straight home. But Ben wasn't my responsibility. I wasn't his mother. I did more than enough by picking him up, taking him to the doctor, and ensuring he was safe. And yet, instead of gratitude, all I got was blame. I could feel something inside me snap. Just then, Jack and Laura walked in the door. My mother-in-law had an appointment, and Jack had taken the day off to accompany her. As I stood there, I realized how much this family had been using me. We hadn't even been living together for six months, and I was already at my breaking point. What's going on? Did Emma mess something up again? Of course, Jack immediately assumed I was at fault. Before we started living together, he used to tell me how much he loved me and how he believed in me. But ever since Kate moved in, he always sided with his sister. Can you believe this? Emma actually left Ben at daycare while he was sick. What kind of daughter-in-law does something so selfish? Come on, Emma. You know better than that. I couldn't believe my ears. After everything I had done, this is the thanks I get. And now they were ganging up on me? The anger and frustration I had been holding back for months finally boiled over. I couldn't take it anymore. You know what? I'm done. I'm done with this whole thing. The house, the family, all of it. I've had enough. Emma, what are you talking about? I'm leaving, Jack. I'm leaving and I'm not coming back. I've already decided. I've accepted a transfer to the New York office and I'm moving there. What, New York? You're leaving for good? You can't be serious. You're abandoning us? What about Ben? Ben is your responsibility, Kate, not mine. I've been taking care of him because you forced me to, but that ends now. You're his mother, so you take care of him. <sighs> How dare you? I can't believe you just leave us like this. I laughed bitterly. <laughs> leave you? You all made my life a living hell, and now you're shocked that I'm leaving? I've done more than enough for all of you. It's time I start living my own life. Jack, you said you loved me. You said you'd support me. But the moment your family came into the picture, that changed. You sided with them every single time. I've had enough of this. Emma, wait. We can talk about this. I'll change. I'll make it right, I swear. It's too late, Jack. I don't trust you anymore. I already filed for divorce. Divorce? You're divorcing me? Oh, I can't believe this is happening. It's happening, Jack. We're over. I handed him the divorce papers. You can't be serious. Please, let's talk about this. There's nothing to talk about. This is final. Jack's face went pale. He looked like he was about to collapse. I can't believe this. I never thought you'd actually leave me. What about everything we've been through? It's because of everything we've been through that I'm leaving. You've shown me that I can't count on you, so I'm choosing myself. You ungrateful girl. After everything we've done for you, this is how you repay us? <laughs> done for me? What exactly have you done for me? All you've done is take from me. 
my money, my time, my energy. I'm done, given. You'll regret this, Emma. You're making a huge mistake. Maybe I will, but it'll be my mistake to make. At least now, I'll be free. I turned to leave, but before I walked out the door, I had one last thing to say. By the way, I've already moved out most of my stuff. I'm staying at a hotel tonight, and tomorrow I'm flying to New York. You're really leaving? Yes, I am. Goodbye, Jack. I turned and walked out the door without looking back. Emma, wait! Please, don't do this. But I was already gone. I felt a strange sense of peace as I walked away. For the first time in years, I was free. I didn't have to deal with the constant demands, the ungratefulness, or the suffocating family. I could finally live for myself. The next day, I boarded a plane to New York. As I looked out the window, I smiled. A new life was waiting for me, and I was ready for it. When I arrived in New York, the city's energy immediately filled me with excitement. I had always dreamed of living here, and now, that dream was finally coming true. My new apartment was small, but it was mine. No more in-laws and no more chaos. Just peace. I started my new job at the New York office. It was challenging, but I loved it. I finally felt like I was where I was meant to be. A few months later, I received a message from Jack. Emma, can we talk? I miss you. I didn't reply. I had moved on. I heard through mutual friends that Jack's life had fallen apart after the divorce. His family had turned on him. Without me, they had no one to blame but him. And he realized too late that I had been the one holding everything together. It wasn't my problem anymore. I had my own life to focus on. As for Kate and Laura, they eventually had to move out of the apartment. They couldn't afford it without me and Jack. Kate went back to her hometown to live with her parents. I heard she tried to continue her modeling career, but it didn't go well. Laura ended up moving into a retirement home. I felt no guilt about how things turned out for them. They had brought it upon themselves. As for me, I thrived in New York. My career took off. I made new friends, found new passions, and built a life I loved. I had no regrets. Sometimes you have to choose yourself, no matter how hard it is. And that's exactly what I did. And now, I'm happier than I ever imagined I could be.